In the history of American Cosa Nostra, the threat of violence is just as important as its use, and nearly every member and associate in its history is capable. There are individuals, however, who stand out even among their peers in the underworld. These mobsters are the 30 most feared wise guys in American Cosa Nostra. Number 8. Chicago Outfit Associate, Frank, the German, Swice. Francis John Swice, also known as Frank the German, was born on February 7, 1932, in Chicago, Illinois. While his mother was Sicilian, his father, also named Francis, was of German descent, which was the reason for his nickname. Little is known about Frank Swice's childhood other than he started out as a thief and a burglar fairly young. He would appear on the underworld radar for the first time in the 1960s, when he was known to have worked directly for bosses Tony Joe Batters Accardo and Sam Momo Giancana. He would eventually settle in working for Chinatown crew captain Angelo the Hook La Pietra, and would also work with Joey the Clown Lombardo and Felix Milwaukee Phil Aldaricio. On one of his earliest assignments, he and outfit gangster Joey the Clown Lombardo were tasked with the murder of Richard W. Hoff, a part owner of the Crossroads Motel and a man with long-time ties to organized crime. The hit would be interrupted by the Cook County Sheriff's Department. The officer on the scene, John J. Flood, would later tell a crowded courtroom how he spotted Swice sneaking around the corner of the building he then saw a car parked nearby with a man and a woman in the front seat. Flood testified that he sensed that the couple in the car were about to become victims of some violent act. At the same time, Flood told how he saw a second car parked just a few lengths away with a man in the driver's seat slouched down behind the steering wheel in an attempt to hide from view. In the brief exchange that followed, Flood ordered Swice to produce some identification and at the same time, gestured to the man in the parked car to get out and come forward. The man in the car, later believed to be Joey the Clown Lombardo, attempted to run the officer down while escaping. Schweiss was not charged in the incident. Schweiss was also suspected in another murder in 1962. This time, the victim would be his 18-year-old girlfriend, manicurist Eugenia Papas. Her body was found floating in the Chicago River. She had been shot through the heart, according to police, while sitting in the passenger seat of a car. Chicago Detective Richard Kane, who led the investigation, was himself secretly on the mob's payroll. Schweiss was questioned, but never charged. Schweiss was also involved in a conspiracy of sorts that same year, as he had been suspected of involvement in the controversial death of Marilyn Monroe. Schweiss often worked outside of Chicago, so traveling for a hit was nothing new to him. It is alleged that outfit boss Sam Giancana ordered Schweiss to finish off Monroe and make it look like a drug overdose. Whether that is true or not, Monroe's death on August 4, 1962 was never officially ruled a suicide due to lack of evidence. Many investigators believe Monroe was murdered by the Chicago outfit because of her connections to the Kennedy family and the Chicago mob boss Sam Momo Giancana. Throughout the remainder of the 1960s, Schweiss would quietly become one of the outfit's go-to hitmen. And Schweiss did not slow down in the 1970s either. In December of 1973, the same detective that may have shielded Schweiss back in 62 ended up being killed by him. Richard Kane, who was disgraced and fired for his outfit affiliation in 1964, went to work directly for Giancana and the outfit. He would go to prison on perjury and accessory to bank robbery charges in 1968. After he was released on parole, Kane made frequent trips to and from Mexico as Sam Giancana's courier and financial advisor, while simultaneously working as an FBI informant for Agent William F. Romer, allegedly muscling out his rivals by revealing their operations to federal authorities. Likely due to playing both sides, Kane was killed by a masked gunman in Rose's Sandwich Shop in Chicago on December 20, 1973. Schweiss was suspected of involvement in the murder. In the late 70s and early 80s, Schweiss would assist Angelo the Hook La Pietra and the Chicago Outfit skim $2 million from Vegas casinos. Working for La Pietra, Schweiss also handled a number of extortion rackets in the city of Chicago. His main skill, however, was killing people 
and he would continue to handle a number of hits for the outfit. One of the hits Schweiss is believed to be involved in is the murder of Tony the Ant and Michael Spilatro. Like many facets of Schweiss's life, it is not known if he was one of the killers or had a peripheral role. Other murders Schweiss may have been involved in include Giancana associate Chucky English, Teamster official Alan Dorfman, Joe Testa, Hollywood connection Johnny Rossielli, Angelo Boscarino, Patsy Riccardi, Donald Aronow, and porno distributor Paul Gonski, who happened to be gunned down on Schweiss's property. Schweiss's run would be stalled in 1989 when he was locked up on charges related to extortion. While locked up, he was in the same prison with outfit turncoat Gerald Scarpelli. Scarpelli would commit suicide under suspicious circumstances as he was found with his hands and his feet tied while suffocating with a plastic bag over his head. Again, suspicions were on Schweiss, however there is no evidence the two ever crossed paths and Schweiss being the killer is just conjecture. Schweiss would be again released from prison and slipped under the radar until he was rolled up in the family secrets investigation. He would go on the lam before finally being arrested in Kentucky in 2005. His trial would be severed from the others due to poor health and he would die from cancer in 2008. By the end of his career, it is alleged that he murdered upwards of 80 people, including women, which is where most mobsters drew the line. For being a prolific hitman, Frank the German Schweiss kept a low profile while still having one of the most fearsome reputations in the Chicago underworld. Michael Spilatro allegedly showed Schweiss's picture to his daughter and told her if she were to ever see the man around her or the house to immediately call the police. He was the boogeyman of Chicago. Even the most seasoned killers feared him. He is without a doubt one of history's most feared gangsters. Number 7 Murder Incorporated member, Frank the Dasher Abandando. Francesco Frank the Dasher Abandando was born in Brooklyn, New York on July 11, 1910 to Lorenzo Abandando and Rosario Famaglietti. Both parents immigrated from Avellino, Italy to New York City in the early 1900s and would have 12 children, six of whom did not survive childhood. The Abandandos lived in a tough neighborhood, and young Frank was a product of his rough environment. During his youth, he began his criminal lifestyle committing petty crimes. Soon, he would find himself in reform school at the age of 17 for beating a New York police officer with a baseball bat. By his 20s, he had joined a street gang called the Ocean Hill Hooligans, located in the Ocean Hill section of Brooklyn, where he would meet gang leader Harry Happy Mayo. The two would form a friendship with the slightly older Mayone mentoring Abandando in the criminal rackets. Mayone would make Abandando his top lieutenant, and together the two would run lucrative extortion and gambling rackets. The extortion racket was simple yet effective. Abandando and Mayone would ask for protection money from shop owners. Those that did not pay found their shops in flames. Mayon and Abandando would soon join with Jewish gangsters that they knew from the area named Abe Rellis, Martin Goldstein, and Harry Pittsburgh Phil Strauss in order to take on the Shapiro brothers. They would be dubbed the Brownsville Boys and would later join the Bugs and Meyer mob to form Murder Incorporated. Previously that year, the Shapiros had unsuccessfully tried to murder Rellis and Goldstein. Meyer Shapiro then abducted Rellis' girlfriend and raped her. Rellis, Strauss, and Goldstein wanted revenge, and they, along with Mayone and Abandando, wanted to take over Shapiro's criminal rackets as well. On July 11, 1931, Irvin Shapiro was gunned down near his apartment. On September 17, 1931, Meyer was found shot to death in the basement of a tenement building on Manhattan's Lower East Side. Three years later, on orders from Buckhalter, they would finally get Willie Shapiro. On the night of July 20th, 1934, the last Shapiro brother was supposedly buried alive in a sand pit, which was located in the marshlands of Canarsie, by Rellis, the Amberg brothers, Frank Abandando, and Harry Mayone. Soon, Rellis, Strauss, Goldberg, Mayone, and Abandando would join a larger group called the Combination, led by Louis Lepke Buckhalter and Albert Anastasia. 
The press would name the group Murder Incorporated. The gang started picking up murder contracts from the National Crime Syndicate with the help of Syndicate board member Joe Adonis, and it wasn't long before Murder Incorporated became their official enforcement arm. Together, the group would murder 400 to 1,000 people during their existence, and by the 1930s, Abandando himself was reputed to have killed at least 30 people, mostly in Brooklyn, for a payment of around $500 per murder. In 1937, Abandando assisted in the murder of George Rudnick, a lone shark in Brooklyn. Rellis had ordered Rudnick's murder because he had received information that Rudnick was a police informant. Using an ice pick and a meat cleaver, Abandando and several other gang members strangled Rudnick, stabbed him 63 times, and finally finished the job by crushing his skull. Like so many other mob murders, the police were never able to charge anyone with the crime. In February 1939, Abandando was also involved in the killing of mobster Feliz Esposito. The contract was issued because he had been a prosecution witness in a mob murder trial 17 years earlier. In 1940, Rellis was charged and arrested for multiple murders. Realizing that he faced execution if convicted, Rellis agreed to testify against his co-conspirators. Rellis implicated his boss, Lepke Buckhalter, in the murder of Brooklyn candy store owner Joseph Rosen. Buckhalter was eventually convicted and executed for this crime. And Rellis was not done yet. The information he provided also implicated Louis Capone, Mendy Weiss, Harry Mayone, Pittsburgh Phil Strauss, Irving Nitzberg, childhood friend Martin Bugsy Goldstein, and Frank Abandando. His testimony led to the arrest of Abandando for the murder of George Rudnick in 1937. In May 1940, Abandando was put on trial for the murder, along with co-defendants Harry Happy Mayone and Pittsburgh Phil Strauss. They were all found guilty of the murder, However, the verdict was overturned on appeal. With Strauss already convicted on a different murder, Mayone and Abandando were retried and convicted again of first-degree murder. They were all sentenced to death by electrocution at Sing Sing Prison in Austin, New York. On February 19, 1942, he was executed using Old Sparky. Prior to execution, Abandando continued to mock and curse his guards. It was reported that he displayed no fear and seemed to find a morbid humor in the proceedings. Abandando, like his contemporaries Mayone, Strauss, and Rellis, was a cold-blooded killer that never shied away from violence. He was ready to carry out hits for the mob at a moment's notice and struck fear into the criminal underworld. What set Abandando apart from the other three was his sadistic, sexually deviant behavior. While Abandando was said to be a connoisseur of fine clothes and fancy cars, he was also a habitual sexual predator who would drive around his neighborhoods of Brownsville and Ocean Hill looking for young women to rape. The prosecutor at his murder trial said that Abandando had all but admitted one rape, to which Abandando replied, Well, that one doesn't really count. I married the girl later. While many mobsters drew the line at the rape and murder of women, Abandando had no line. He did what he wanted, when he wanted, and for that reason, he is near the top of the list when it comes to being the most feared gangster.